All right. Welcome back. So here's my Rastakhan's Rumble review of Shaman. I really have no idea what to say about Shaman. Okay. So the problem is, like, all the other classes, putting my water away, all the other classes got really good cards. Or they got, well, not, I'm not going to say really good cards, but they got cards that synergize with each other. And, like, the Shaman cards are really all over the place. Like, the one moderate synergy that they have is kind of cheap spells. Like, Kragwa plays a bunch of, play a bunch of spells. Spirit of Frog, play a spell, draw another spell. Uh, Wartbringer, if you play two spells, deal two damage. <clears throat> so, uh, Haunting Vision. Play a spell, uh, the next spell you cast costs three less, discover a spell. So, like, all of these are based around getting a bunch of cheap spells. So, the problem with Shaman is, like I said, we go over to Shaman, uh, let's say reset all filters, arena, Shaman, spells. Spell, 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 spell. Is that the majority of Shaman spells, like here, you take a look, uh, like Lightning Star, Overload, Overload, Voltaic Burst, Overload, Feral Spirit, Overload, 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 uh, Zap, Overload. <coughs> So as you can see, a lot of these spells have overload attached to them. So you don't want to play a bunch of overloads, uh, a bunch of overload spells, because that actually hurts you. Or you only want to play them when it's necessary to play them. So I think the trigger for a lot of these things is going to be very difficult to pull off. And you got things like random things like Totemic Smash, which is okay. You got Lickum, which is dependent upon being overloaded, which kind of synergizes, but eh. I, I think like I think if this came out and plays in play like a couple years ago when Totem oh, when uh, Overload Shaman was a thing, and they had a uh, Tunnel Trog, like if that if Lickum was there instead of Spirit Claws, I think that would have been actually really good. And if Spirit Claws was now, it would probably be better for Shaman. Uh, Bog Slosher, just Weird card for Shaman. <clears throat> okay, anyways, let's go over the cards here. Wartbringer. If you play two spells this turn, deal two damage. So again, you have to play two spells. I don't think you're going to play two spells all that often. So, like, it's pretty much going to be a uh, one mana 2-1. Maybe you play some spells late in the game and it's okay, but by then the um, impact is not really all that strong. So I would say top of the seventh bucket in shaman <clears throat> a one mana two one would be in the bottom be nice say it's a little bit better than that top of the seventh bucket here like an air element so probably all right totemic smash do not fall in love with the overkill on this like this is one of those cards that is a noob trap because people who are noobs are going to see overkill, and they're going to think, I cannot use this to kill off a 3-2, or I cannot use this to kill off something with 2 damage. Summoning a totem is not all that good. Summoning a totem is not worth leaving something up that you could kill with this. So, anyways, it's Arcane Shot. It's Holy Smite. We know those cards are good. We know those cards are heavily under-bucketed by Blizzard, and they're cards that are, like, one of the best win rate cards in the set. Like, uh, like they have one... Like, they have one of the highest win rates. Uh, very quickly, going over here. Like, you see here, Arcane Shot. <clears throat> Sorry, win rate. Oops, wrong way. Oh, deck win rate. I, I was right. Sorry, here. Arcane Shot is, like, about the same as Animal Companion. That's because Arcane Shot is heavily underbucketed. We go over to Priest. Uh, let's see here. Holy Smite. 56.7. It's better than Elixir. It's better than Free From Amber. It's better than Shadow Word Pain. That's not because it's a better card. That's because it's heavily underbucketed. So, like, when Blizzard, sorry, when Blizzard does Shaman, they're probably going to put it, like, right around here because that's where the one mana deal two damage cards go, and that's not where it belongs. So I say that it belongs all the way over here. This card is going to be underbucketed. That's like 100%. Pick this card because this is a very, very good card. And then, hey, sometimes you get Spell Power Totem, and then you can actually kill that two damage thing and summon a Totem. Uh, again, really good card. 
Reign of Totes. So, Phantom Militia. Uh, so this is Phantom Militia for three mana cheaper with an overload of three without the option of being able to play just one 2-4 taunt. So, the Toads themselves are annoying for the opponent, which is always very good. They set up for things like Stormbringer, if you have the... Uh, like, if, not if you don't... Not if you're not at turn 10, because then you overload too much. They set up for Bloodlust. They set up for Flame Tongue. They set up for, like, all those, like, board buffs that Shaman has. So, <clears throat> obviously, this would be a good card in Shaman. Uh, Phantom Militia is a lot better in Shaman than it is in other classes. So, I would say the comparison is Phantom Militia and then, like, maybe a bucket, maybe a bucket and a half a bucket to a bucket better than that. And for that would be like here phantom militia is here which is the top of the fourth bucket which means by proxy this should be here rain its odes should be bottom of the third bucket and yeah that yeah it's probably better than it's better than witch's apprentice better than voltaic burst probably around the same as thunderhead pretty not pretty self-explanatory there okay rares box lusher <clears throat> Druid had a card, which I do not remember offhand, which was three mana, bounce a card back into your hand and give it plus five, plus, uh, plus five, plus five or something. And that was a horrible card. This at least puts a three, three body on the board and gives it plus two, plus two. Again, I don't know how, like, it, it just doesn't fit in with the rest of the cards in the set. So, like, is it, it's better than Brewmasters? Not really. Like, and at least initially, like, Youthful Brewmaster is better on two than this is on three. Ancient Brewmaster is better on four than this is on three. So in turn, you give a minion plus two plus two. But the problem with the Brewmasters wasn't getting value out of cards. The problem is that they anti-tempo you. And that has the same problem here. So the buffs, like, you can get the tempo back eventually. But it's still the problem of, like, you have to take something off the board. Now, if you have a totem on board, then this can actually be very good. And that's probably what this is going to hit most of the time, is a totem. You bounce a totem back, and then you play a one-mana 2-4. Uh, and that is going to happen, and that will be very useful. But I think on most minions, like it's going to be very uh, situational whether or not this is a good card. So ultimately, for a box slasher, like I can't really be all that high on it. So I would say it is probably... Let me see here. Like, I would probably put it top of the fifth bucket. Yeah. Top of the fifth bucket, because the Brewmasters are, like, bottom of the sixth bucket. Let me see, useful. Okay, useful Brewmaster is top of the sixth bucket. So, be nice. It's a little bit better, but I don't think it's all that much better, because it still has the flaws that the Brewmaster has that you have to play around. Spirit of the Frog. <clears throat> so... Three mana, draw a card, O3. Oh, that would be a mana tide totem. So this gets you your card immediately. But you need to play a spell with it. So, And you need to play spells, and you need to justify it like having things to play spells on. And you need to have a spell that costs one more. I'm not sure if this is going to work. I don't think it's going to work. Like, going back over here to Shaman. Uh, let's see here, Shaman. Like, you can see, like, they have some one-mana spells, like Unstable Evolution, but then you need to get one of these two-mana spells, and then you need to get one of these three-mana spells, and then it kind of ends at five. Like, there's, like, outside of Reign of Toads, there's no way to actually get a Stormbringer if you got it. But, like, you're maybe going to get one or two draws, but then you need to have this and the spell in hand, and you need to have that, like, in your deck. And I would say I would honestly rather have a Mana Tide Toto than this like, even if the effect is a little bit delayed, because I know the Mana Tide is going to work. And if we see here, Mana Tide is top of the sixth bucket. Arguably under-bucketed, but uh, that's basically where it is. So, Spirited Frog, I would say top of the seventh bucket. Because of the cost, like... Because the other thing with this is that a lot of Shaman spells have Overload. I mentioned that before. So you don't want to play like more than one Shaman spell that has Overload per turn because that screws up your next turn. So like even if you're drawing cards from that, that's still not something you want to do. 
All right. After that, we have Gallicum. So you don't want to be consistently overloaded. You actually don't want to be overloaded. Like this is it helps you a little bit to be overloaded, but like it makes up for being overloaded, but it's still not a good thing. Because when you're overloaded, you have less options and you get into a lot more trouble. So overall, Lickum, I think Lickum is not that good of a card because overload does hurt you a lot more than it should. So Lickum, like, I would say maybe top of the sixth bucket. Just be just because with overload, it is three damage. And three damage does deal a lot. But I would say here, top of the sixth bucket, prob like I I'm being generous here. Like I initially had a bottom of the sixth, and I said, okay, maybe with like the spell stuff, it'll be top of the sixth. But I'm not really all that high in this card. Okay, on the epics, big bad voodoo. This is a worse ancestral spirit. Ancestral spirit is one of those cards that is heavily underbucketed by Blizzard. And again, we go back over here to spells, deck win rate. Where is Ancestral Spirit? Right here. So you see, it's like one of the best spells in Shaman. Like you got, it's it's better than a lot of this stuff, and that's in large part because it's overbucketed. This is worse because it has RNG. Because there are a lot of times where with Ancestral Spirit, you know what you're getting. With Big Bad Voodoo, like on average, like for example. Uh, for a three mana card, on average, you're going to get something like about two, three, or three, two in stats. So if you play an Ancestral Spirit on a Bloodfin Raptor, you know you're getting a three, two. If you're playing a Big Bad Voodoo on a Bloodfin Raptor, you're going to, on average, get a three, two, which means sometimes you get a three, four, or sometimes you get a five, five, and sometimes you get an O3 three that doesn't do anything. So like Big Bad Voodoo, I don't think is that much better than Ancestral Spirit. Again, Blizzard heavily under buckets it, so I'm going to bucket it higher than where um, <clears throat> Ancestral Spirit is right now, like here. Ancestral Spirit is top of the seventh bucket. It should really be at least fourth bucket or higher. I would say Big Bad Voodoo is probably top of the sixth bucket, maybe bottom of the fifth bucket. I just think the chance of getting screwed over by this card hurts you, and like evolve on only one minion like the reason master of evolution master of evolution was so good was because it was evolve on a four or five the reason evolve was so good was because it was on everything on your board ha putting evolve on one card for like uh, j j just think about this this is evolve it costs one more mana it only impacts one minion and you have to kill off your minion in order to get the evolve effect. Just think about how bad all of that sounds. It's so much worse. Haunting Visions, Primordial Glyphid Ain't. So first off, you cannot bank the effect, which means like you can go Primordial Glyph onto Discover a Spell and then bank that effect. So you can play a turn five flame strike. You can't do this. So whatever spell you discover, <clears throat> you play, you have to play it that turn, or otherwise you just spent three mana to discover a spell, and that's bad. Like, three mana draw a card, three mana to discover a spell is pretty bad. So you need to discover something that you can play. Shamans have a lot of uh, spells that are situational, a lot of overload spells. Like, I just, I think this is not that good of a card. Like, maybe you can find something you want for it, maybe not. Like, I have it in the fourth bucket the bottom of the fourth bucket and i'm not happy about it but this is sometimes going to discover a lightning storm when you need it this is sometimes going to discover a volcano or a bloodlust or a stormbringer like the discover effect is so powerful that sometimes it's just going to absolutely win you the game so i can't say it's a bad card but it is situational it is late game and ultimately i just i don't I am not really all that sold on this being like a game-breaking card. So, uh, legendaries here. Okay, first one. Cragwad of Frog, return to all spells you played to your hand last turn to your hand. Again, you don't want to play spells. Unstable evolution is like... Uh, by the way, I forgot to mention here. For Spirit of the Frog, 
for Wartbringer, for Kragwa. Unstable Evolution is the uh, exception to all of them. Because Unstable Evolution, you can just keep on casting that and draw all your two mana spells, whatever you have. Uh, Unstable Evolution, you can easily get two of those off and then play this and then Unstable Evolution it and try to get a, a Radiant Elemental or a Sorcerer's Apprentice. Here, you can fill your hand with Unstable Evolutions once you play this. But again, if you're talking like regular Shaman spells, Shaman spells have Overload. If you Overload by four or more, then you can't play this because you are overloaded. So realistically, you're prob and also the draw, the battle cry is dependent on what you did the turn before, so you can't really 100% set this up. So I think ultimately, like you can maybe expect one card out of it, but I just don't like maybe one card. I would say, but I just don't see it. Like there's too many things going against it for me to say it's a good card. I would have it. Forgot to put this down here to shine in. I would say probably a 49 and the top of the third bucket with it. I just I don't see this card really being all that great. Finally, we got Zentimo. All right. So again, going back to shaman spells. AOE hex. AOE buff your guys plus two plus two. AOE three freeze freeze three things. AOE deal eight damage to three minions. By the way, remember. Because of this card is cast your spell, uh, what this does is cast your spell three times, which means you eat the overload. So the overload happens three times, which means if you use Crushing Hands, you're not, you don't have another turn. You don't have a turn next turn. AOE Ancestral Spirit, AOE Big Bad Voodoo, uh, AOE Rockbiter, AOE Lightning Bolt, AOE Earthshock, uh, AOE Zap, AOE Tidal Surge, uh, Heal for 12. So, you see, all you need is, like, uh, AoE Lightning Burst. All you need, uh, no AoE, is, like, this to hit one spell, and it can be incredibly powerful. So, I, th I think that's really, really strong. Now, the stats by itself are bad, so it's, it's, like, entirely based on the combo effect, but that combo effect is so, so strong. Like... I, I have to I have to say I can only go 70 because it's so much based around the combo and having those cards in your hand and it's not gonna happen. But if you have the right combo, this is just like insanely powerful. So as I said, this one right here, 70. Uh, I would say in the top of the second bucket for the legendaries, really good card. This might be the reason to play Shaman if you can get this card and get things with it. Okay, that's it for Shaman. Up next. My favorite class of Rastakhan's Rumble, the Warlock. So I will see you guys in a few.